there are tremendous cultural battles going on. And where you are spiritually, and I'm going to preach to you in just a minute, determines how you view things. The spirit-filled and the sanctified and those who are connected to God sees things one way. The lost, the carnal, and many times yet well-intended and born again who are not spirit-filled see things another way. One of the challenges we have up a room as a church is that this church has been involved in cultural wars for decades. And yet many churches haven't been involved in cultural wars at all. Especially African American churches. The only cultural battle we seem to feel that's worth fighting is if we think an issue is an issue of race. Then here we come. But the other things we seem to omit altogether. So there's a lot of good people who love the Lord. But their pastors, you know, the main, the main sermon is dealing with, you know, getting blessed, getting healed, overcoming your haters, or getting whatever you want from the Lord. Uh, creature comforts, new house, new car, you know, that kind of a thing. You're going to be a millionaire, you know, stuff like that. And some who get truly saved and sanctified, they get truly saved and sanctified to go to heaven, but they're not reminded that we have battles here that we must fight. So when you see people who have been involved in cultural wars fight the cultural battles, if you're part of a congregation where the preacher doesn't talk about stuff like that at all, then you don't know how to view it. And many times you end up siding with the enemy. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. It says, but the natural man received not the things of the spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, Elam and Chukwu, because they are spiritually discerned. Some things you need the Holy Ghost to recognize. Where am I headed? There's a big uproar online about uh, what took place a few days ago at uh, uh, Lego store. Uh, my son-in-law, and, and I'm not doing this because he's my son-in-law um, I want to speak up because I agree and he's right I know what it's like to fight cultural battles and there are those who may agree with you in private that sometimes I've had a preacher to call me the man was whispering on the phone is this pastor witness yeah man how you doing doc man I'm doing alright I just want you to know we agree with you you keep saying what you're saying. I said, oh, God. I said, okay, Doc. <laughs> but I don't want to be nuanced. I don't want to equivocate. I want you to know where I stand on what he did. First of all, I think it was a stroke of genius to have the presence of mind to pull out your cell phone. When you're 6'4", 280 pound, built like a Greek god, black man, strong as a bull, you need a phone. Because you can get accused of anything. And sometimes it's hard to disprove yourself. Next thing you know, somebody say, well, he struck me, or he assaulted me, or he grabbed me. All right, because we've seen that happen before. Woman jogging in the park, and the man, the brother way on the other side, and she called the police screaming and hollering, saying that he's accosting her, but she didn't know somebody was taping the whole thing. And the man hadn't even come anywhere near her. He had just been to Lego about 30 days ago and bought some products, some toys for his children. He 
proud father of three, three grandbabies, and married to my lovely daughter. And when he went in the store, he noticed something that wasn't present the last time. All the employees were wearing this LBGTQ plus A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the alphabet. Every time you turn around, it keeps growing. And the elder, with the presence of mind, that's probably why he's not in jail, to turn on, to tape the thing, talk to them. Now, depending upon where you are spiritually, that will determine what you see. I want you to play a little bit of the tape. I won't go through the whole thing, but I just want to put it, because it's out there, and you've probably seen it. If you haven't, I don't know where you've been. All right. I was trying to tell my mama about it. She said, I saw it. But the question is, why are you all in here with those pins on? Do you think children care about what man sucks at home and what girl eats vaginas at home? Do you think they care about that? Do, I mean, do, do you think they I care? I don't think they think about that, personally. Right, so why would you, so, so they, they think about it when they see your pants? No, they don't. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. It's, it's really disgusting. Good. That's all grooming. Okay. All right, did y'all mind leaving? Yeah, if you call security, tell security that, you, that you're in here. All right, wearing, uh, all right, really? stop right there. Sure. Let me tell you what they did. They called security, and my heart went out to the security man because he, he didn't want to be there. Little bitty fellow. And, uh, but John is a Christian. He has the Holy Ghost. And security told him, says, man, you got to leave. He says, I'll leave. But then he made an announcement. He told the parents that these people, they got all this LBGT stuff, Q, they are indoctrinating our children. And uh, it's everywhere. There are those online who saw that, who said that Elder Amanchuku attacked Lego. And that's one point of view. But that's the carnal point of view. That's the natural man point of view. The spiritual man because you know I said these things are spiritually discerned, recognized that he was responding to Lego's attack on our children and on our parents and on families. Because Lego decided that they would come out with a homosexual alphabet, that they would have transgenders working in the stores that they would market not Lego but homosexuality to children. They launched the attack. He responded to the attack. When I saw what he did I said what if all fathers would do that. Do you not know that Lego would change their policy overnight? For those who who are washed in the blood who attack the preacher for telling the truth if Elda Manchuku is guilty of attacking Lego then John the Baptist was guilty of attacking Herod because John told Herod it is not lawful for you to have your brother's wife. Am I in the book? That's what he told. Him. That's what he told. Him. Now, now, Herod, Herod, didn't make a great big announcement. He just took his brother Philip's wife. And, oh, and by the way, Philip wasn't dead. Herod went and visited Philip, saw Philip's wife, and decided he wanted her. And took the one. What kind of woman would leave, go from one brother to another? What, what brother would want his brother's wife? An immoral man. 
A man who had the morals of Lego. And let me tell you something. These corporations, they don't care about your children. They don't care about your sons. They don't care about your daughters. They only care about the bottom line. This man stood for children. This man stood for family. Uh, come here, I want to see you. Come, because they, because they, got, they, they got me in the shot. Come on, John. Stood for children, and he stood for families. Yes, and upper room, he will not stand alone. Now, he'll stand alone because he knows no fear, but he ain't got to because I'm with it 100%. He's right. Yes, 